the finds that we've made in the, the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes project really do change how we view Stonehenge. It no longer sits um, isolated in the centre of a, of a plain. We found about 17 new late Neolithic monuments, monuments of the period of the great phases of Stonehenge and monuments which are like Stonehenge, smaller in scale perhaps, but nonetheless intimately linked with the, with the stones themselves and representing what must have been smaller ritual um, shrines or, or something of that sort. In fact, in the field behind me, and I'm only a short distance from Stonehenge, uh, one of the barrows there has been resurveyed, and with it, beneath it and surrounding it are a series of pits which look very much like a, a, a small henge as well. So even that close to Stonehenge, new things are turning up regularly. We've got several different technologies here. We've got magnetometers, we've got ground penetrating radar, we have electromagnetic induction, we have resistance um, instruments also, most of which have been racked on um, together on arrays. The data is being fed straight into onboard computers that are being uh, recording and processing and every measurement is then located with a, an onboard GPS. So we're getting very precise measurements for uh, locations for every single measurement that we, that we record. For some time there's been a mismatch between the ability to capture high resolution data and the ability to actually process it. And we sort of we have to be living in this time which is, is great because you can do both. <laughs> Rather than just sort of look at one data set and understand that, we can start combining data sets. We can sort of fuse them, we call it data fusion. Um, so being able to deal with large data sets and combine them with other data sets, um, there's many, many little mini revolutions going on in technology and archaeology at the moment. When we finished the, this project, when, when the data's been processed, and that's only a matter of days really, um, we will produce the first substantive map of the landscape of Stonehenge, uh, touching every part of the landscape rather than the bits we knew about, about already. And that is going to fundamentally change how we view the most important archaeological monument in Britain and probably the world.